So <coughs> actually, just let me show what's going on as well. Uh, Spring Shifter, which is a highly underrated plugin uh, in Logic. Nobody uses it. Oh, really few people use it. I always use it. It does all these crazy effects. Is um, hold on, let me. That screamy kind of uh, kind of sound that you hear, it's it's this one, uh, and also moves the sound left and right. It it shifts the frequencies, it create a lot of mess, and uh, it 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 works. It makes the sound work as a as a kind of uplift sound that that drags you into the into the main part. Um, so yeah, all this kind of sound, if it's something as complex as as this one, definitely definitely. Right away, as soon as as soon as they think it, uh, if it's just you know okay, there there's gonna be a, an automation on the cutoff. I know that there's gonna be an automation on the cutoff, and I can just work on something else and then and then put it there. Uh, what's definitely true is that once you set your automation, you can have a better idea of the feeling that of the track that you're gonna have. Um, so so yeah, when I was doing when I was designing the sound for the lead, uh, for two reasons I had to do the out automation right away as well. First reason was because it was on a virus, so I had to render it down, and and of course since you have to save the actual file, you have to automate it, um, because because otherwise you 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 can you can put a filter an external filter, but it won't do the the envelope filter that I showed with silent. Uh, so yeah, I had to render it down with the automation, so I did the automation right away. But for fade away of the sound or you know uh putting a putting a cutoff on on the whole percussion thing, this is something that you do after. Um so yeah. Thanks. Definitely after and and right away if if you need to if you need to have uh a more in depth thing. Hi. Hey. I actually have Two questions. Uh, first one has to do with how you're laying your kicks. I'm wondering if you're actually composing each individual part of the kick, or you're using samples for that. And then, um, if you have time, I was wondering if you could kind of go through the layering of the baseline, kind of like how you did the baseline that comes in at thirty, the bar thirty-three, kind of like how you did with the chords. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, kick. It depends. Uh, it usually. Uh, usually is a. One of the things that I like to do uh, now, I kind of lost it because I got that plugin called uh, Metrum, which is by uh, by someone. Let's not promote our people. Uh, it's a uh, it's definitely a good plugin that lets you uh, put a bunch of put a bunch of samples and uh, uh, have envelopes going on, so you can you can get the the attack of a kick, and then you can have the 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 body of another kick. So let's just talk a little bit more. Uh, straightforward. Let's say you you like the attack of the Swedish House Mafia kick, uh, and and you like the the body of uh, any other kick. So you can you can take that one, put it in one layer, and underneath that you can have the body of another kick. And it's really quick on the way that you uh, that you shape the the envelopes, so that that the kick doesn't get muddy, especially with bass frequencies. When you when you layer kick, it gets really tricky. Um, so there's a lot of work on the automation to do. Uh, what I used to do, and again, it's something that when I say it, people like look at me like I'm an alien. It's um, it's using the EXS24 um, sign init sign um, wave, which is uh, simply this one. Uh, EXS24 is here. Mono is fine because you don't need anything else. Um, Let's let's quickly make a bass, a kick one, a uh, kick bass, uh, kick drum. Uh, All right. So I assume that this is my high part of the kick. No, this is the bottom. Uh, 
Right. Uh, let's see if uh, by any chance this is too much. OK, let's say we like this attack. Um, of course, of course, for the same reason that I was saying, this, telling after, um, telling before, is like there's no base, and so and you want more base, right? Is is one of those cases where you're like, David, give me give me more base. Um, so what you can do here we have our EXS24. I mean, you can do it with whatever synth, but this is you open it and it's there. You don't have to move anything. This is once again workflow. Save some time. Um, you know, it's right here. You have this really simple sound, which is a sine wave. And so you know that your kick is going to be here, here, and then we can copy it. Boom. OK. Does bass. Of course, right now, it doesn't sound nearly uh, as uh, nearly anywhere, it doesn't sound like a good kick at all. So we need to shape it a little bit. So we don't need the attack because the other kick is giving us the attack. So we can go up with this one. We need a little bit of body. It doesn't, It a kick is usually not long, uh, it's not as long as the space between a kick and another one. So of course, we, we, we will want our kick to end around here or even here. But once again, for the same reason that I was telling you with, with, the, synthes uh, with the synthesizer and the release on, on the synthesizer, we don't want the kick to be stubby at all. So it doesn't sound completely natural. Let me, let me bring up the volume a little bit. Usually the shape of a kick is, um, huh, I actually just bought a plugin that will show you this. You see how it's uh, all straight? It doesn't have a, a uh, let's say, uh, how to call it? Sorry, my English is failing on me right now. <laughs> uh, basically, the volume is not going up. It's just a straight block. That's not the shape of a kick. The shape of a kick is up and then down to zero, right? So we're gonna we're gonna create that by lower down the sustain, down with the decay a little bit. So here now, it's going down a little bit more. But we want to have it a little longer. Now you can see it better. So you see, this is like a whole bl straight block. It's uh, like a like a brick. And we don't want that. We want we want our kick to go down a little bit. Okay. This this has the the shape of a kick, but the volume is not there. So up with the volume a little bit. A little bit more decay. We have the attack, we have the body, we have the tail, and it's literally this plugin. I take it out, there's nothing. So, yeah, once again. And you then do you just compress it all together at the end? Yes. All three? Yeah, you can, do, you can do that. You can, um, I really like the API compressor on, on that. Uh, I've never been too much of a multi-band compressor guy, mostly because I can't get what I want out of it. Uh, and another one of my rules is um, if you can't get what you want right of something, it, does, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not worth using, but it's taking time out from, from, from your production. Uh, so, so yeah, if you are if you're flying from from Italy to Australia and you have like literally 36 hours on the plane, maybe yes, you can sit there and start learning 
about how 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 it works and and stuff like that. But you're still taking away time from from something that you could you could you know you could produce something else or or stuff like that. So um, again, my suggestion would be find your tools, learn how to use those, uh, and not like get stuck on it because because that's never a good thing it's always a good thing to 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 try new things and learn new techniques but but if you keep going on something and it's not working out definitely um try to use it as less as possible and and try to use as best as possible as best as possible what you can what you know how to use so so yeah you can get the best out of you know just just this Synthesizer, it's not even a synthesizer, it's a sampler, and it's playing a silly way, uh, silly sine wave, but you can get a kick out of it. Uh, other people will say, Oh, yeah, I have, uh, I use the that that famous guy samples, uh, and layer them all together, and yeah, you can do that, it works perfectly. But with this one, you can get the right sound, and whoop, now it's not playing. And you can tune it. And you have much, much more control. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely samples and other samples won't hurt. It will actually help you a lot. But uh, but I find this this uh, this trick to be to be really really cool cool and, and quick for for quick bass. <laughs> 